All right, what's up guys? Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Welcome to this week's presentation. Now, I hope everyone's having a decent week in the market so far. Uh, for those of you that are regular Shark viewers, welcome back. And uh, for any new viewers, we hope you get something out of this and you continue to tune in. Uh, now, we are aware that everyone has a lot going on this time of year, especially. The holidays are coming up. We get it. Uh, just know that we really appreciate you guys spending the next 45 minutes to an hour or so with us, okay? Uh, go ahead and type a Y in the chat if uh, my audio is coming through all right. All right. Thank you, Peter. So for those of you that are first-timers, um, my name's Ty. I'm one of the guys here at Shark Indicators. Uh, I've been with the company for a couple of years now, and it's been a great experience so far. Now, we've been involved in the Ninja Trader ecosystem for over five years, and we develop some of the most capable trading tools in the industry. Now, that being said, you've got to put in the work to hit your mark. That goes for anything you do. So let's take a, a quick look at the risk disclosure. Take a minute, look that over. Futures, foreign currency, and options trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor. And uh, just to be sure, everyone is seeing this risk disclosure on their screen, correct? Awesome. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, John. So um, as I said before, Shark Indicators doesn't sell any holy grail, this, or home run system, that. Uh, we just build powerful trading tools. And on top of the documentation and weekly workshops, we like to show our audience what other Ninja Trader vendors and educators are doing with our software as well. So what we do for events like this is we bring in our partners and educators uh, so you all get some variety and exposure to different trading methods and personalities. Each of these presenters is successful in their own right and each offers a very unique trading style. So we're going to dive into today's topic, which is creating and implementing an automated Ruby system using Bloodhound and Blackbird. And we'll be learning from Phil Antonson of Lucrum Trading Systems. Now just a bit about Phil, he's a full-time technical trader as well as the founder and manager of both Primerio Capital and Lucrum Trading Systems. He specializes in quantitative analysis and algorithmic trading, which I believe makes him an ideal presenter for this shark audience. So let's just get right to it. I'm going to go ahead and promote Phil to presenter. And the, uh, the mic is yours, Phil. Thank you, Ty, and thank you, everybody, for joining me here today. Uh, today, we are going to be covering the Lucrum Ruby trading system and how it can be integrated with Shark Indicators, Bloodhound, and Blackbird. So, that. so today, we will cover a snapshot of what Lucrum Ruby system is with its features and functions. And we're going to look at the usable outputs of Ruby to then be used with Bloodhound. We will then be building a basic strategy using Bloodhound and Ruby, and then taking that strategy and integrating it with Blackbird. We'll quickly cover some of the additional services of Lucrum Trading Systems, and one of the attendees of this webinar will receive a free license of the Ruby system. So stay tuned for that. That'll be at the end of this presentation. I will uh, do a random number generator and uh, pick one of the attendees from the list. So Lucrum Trading Systems is a provider of both discretionary and automatic trading tools for NinjaTrader 7 and 8, as well as a trading education and system development consulting company. And we are objectively oriented to providing our customers with the resources and tools necessary to empower profitable trading. So a little bit about me, I know Ty covered most of this, so this might be a little bit redundant, but uh, I'm a trader of over 10 years. I was a hedge fund analyst and trader specializing in the metals and energy sectors. I went to the University of Wisconsin for finance and economics. And I'm the founder of Primario Capital Asset Management Company, and I currently reside in Atlanta, Georgia. So my objective with Lucum Trading Systems and why I started this company was to provide quality value added services to traders who are serious about trading, to create a foundation for others to use to become successful traders themselves, and to empower traders to expand their objectives and grow as professionals. So now we're gonna go uh, do a quick overview of Ruby. So I'm gonna pull up a, a crew chart. So this is you know obviously a naked chart five minutes 
and we're going to go ahead and just put Ruby on it. So simply applies as any indicator would and click apply. So this is essentially what you're going to see when you take Ruby out of the box. It is going to transform your chart into a more uh, color coordinated and a little bit more cohesive chart than you would a standard open high low close chart. So some of the key features with this system is to give you a good visual aspect of what the market and what the, the price is trending towards. And these are indicated by both the color coordinated charts and the trade trigger signals that are generated throughout the chart based on the parameters that you have set. Some of the additional features of the system are range pivots, which are going to extend from the high and low ranges based on the deviation of the parameter settings. It also has a few other um, features, such as the modified moving average, which is this color coordinated um, red and, and sort of a teal color. And this is a logarithmic based moving average and in my experience this has shown to be a much more responsive form of moving average it is a lot quicker than say a um, exponential moving average or a simple moving average but along with the modified moving average we have this slow trending uh, exponential moving average which is also quite color coordinated to show you the momentum and strength of the slope of this, this particular indicator. So we're going to go through some of the uh, some of the parameters and some of the settings that you can adjust within the system. Um, I'm not going to cover all of them in too much detail, but I'll give you a sense of what you can do to change this, this system into making it your own and something that works well for your uh, particular trading style. So the first thing we're going to cover is the trade trigger sensitivity. And as you can see where the trade triggers are right now, they are relatively responsive, not too, uh, not too frequent, but we can tweak this based on this number. So if we set it to a, a lower sensitivity, we are going to end up generating a lot more signals. This is going to be a lot more sensitive to a little bit more, less frequent uh, impacts in price volatility. And when we change that number to something higher, say a 50, it is going to be a lot less frequent. You can see a little bit more. And when you have a, a higher sensitivity, it is going to be a little bit more delayed. So the system looks for a little bit more movement in price before it generates a signal. So instead of having this initial, uh, let me turn on cross it. So instead of having this initial signal, short signal, it moves a little bit. So it looks for a little bit more, uh, a little bit more extension in price before it generates the signal. Let's turn this back to and uh, much like the trade trigger sensitivity, we have the trend sensitivity. In a similar fashion, to have a lower number, the system is going to be a little bit more sporadic in how it generates the color-coded bars. So with a lower sensitivity, they're going to be a lot more sensitive, a lot more frequent, and the transitions are going to be a lot more rapid. Vice versa, if we go to a trend sensitivity of five or 50, excuse me, there are going to be a lot more uniform and uh, a lot smoother than to have a lower number. So why these numbers are important and why those parameters are important is this system works ultimately for any, any time period in, in a lot of different trading styles. And by adjusting those numbers, if you're looking to do really short term scalping, you might want to have something a little bit more sensitive. If you're looking for longer holding periods and um, you know looking for a little bit larger runs, you might want to crank those settings up a little bit more to be more certain of the, the signals that be more valid in your style. 
A couple other things. Uh, you can obviously turn on and off some of the different features of the system. Uh, if you don't use something and you don't like the clutter of the chart, you can go ahead and start selecting these to false and clean up the chart for whatever you particularly need. So now we're going to go into the outputs of Ruby and its integration with Shark Indicator's Bloodhound. So we're going to go ahead and oops, throw out Bloodhound. And we're going to open up this template. And this template is going to be provided for anybody that, that chooses to purchase Ruby. So you will have a, a little bit of a head start in terms of having these solvers and outputs readily at your discretion to start creating your own system. So we're going to quickly cover these. These are the uh, predetermined ones. There are ways to modify these and to extrapolate on these outputs uh, and in different ways. This is sort of the rudimentary way on how to access these, these outputs. So the first one is the oops, uh, refresh that quick. First one is the bar direction, whether it's up or down. These are based on the color coordinated, uh, color coordinated bars. Uh, one thing to keep mention of, as you can see that because we changed the initial default indicator on the chart itself, these will not be aligning properly. So let me just go, go back and change this to default. There, now you can see that the output that's generated within Bloodhound is going to overlay accurately with the indicator on the chart. So again, that's, that's very important when you're developing a system, whether it's with Ruby or anything, is, is to make sure that your indicator that you're visualizing on the chart is the exact same that you have within the indicator in Bloodhound. And that's simply by going to the indicator within the, the solver and making sure that the parameters are the same. Next we have the modified moving average. This is going to simply go short or long outputs based on the color and the direction of the, that indicator. Next we have the entry trade signals and again because the values are different it will not quite align. So, what was this, 18, 21? And now they will, they will align properly. And these uh, trade trigger signals are what we're gonna be using to, to do the, the basic system that we're gonna create today. And with the entry trade signals, we also have the extended trade signals. Let me try and find one on the chart. Uh, these are going to be the yellow arrows that are going to generally form after the initial entry signal has been formed. And what these signals are for is to give you an opportunity to know that there is uh, potential for the initial direction of the signal to have a continuation or it could potentially be exhausted so it could be an opportunity for you to either scale into a position, uh, enter a position in its entirety, or actually close your position. And then with the direction, we also have the modified moving average slope. This is going to be a little bit different than the MMA direction in itself. This is simply a slope solver, and it's going to look for a either that positive or negative incline within the slope based on that particular indicator. Like the MMA slope, we have the EMA slope. And the average true range, ATR, whether it's above or below the price in itself. This is the pivot reversal, reversal solver. And this is going to generate 
every time that the range pivot makes a new point. And this is actually going to be the only component within Ruby that will repaint. Uh, range pivot indicators themselves are always a repainting indicator. That being said, they will continue to form as the, the price progresses and based on the standard deviation of the price, it will continue to fluctuate and change as the chart develops. So this solver is, is basically indicating when this uh, pivot point updates. And this output is there we get it to generate is going to be the Fibonacci uh, output and these Fibonacci lines will paint off of the range pivots and are actually accessible for you to use within Bloodhound which is really neat because a lot of people like using Fibonacci's if they think it has a lot of value in terms of finding positive uh, support and resistance levels and now you can actually generate something uh, in an automated sense to pick out those levels. And the example that I have within this template is when price crosses uh, above or below a certain threshold. Next we have bar direction for neutral, which is simply the, the gray bars. And these gray bars are transitionary bars. They are precursors towards a change between the um, bullish or bearish bars. So that is about it for the outputs that I have for that template. And now we're going to go into creating a simple logic matrix and uh, use that to import within Blackbird to see a quick example of how you can very simply make a testable strategy. And what I really, really enjoy about Bloodhound and Blackbird is it's sort of like a rapid prototype machine. Uh, I've been in the automated trading business for a long time, and before Bloodhound it was all manual coding, which was extremely tedious. Uh, there is a lot of component of error within it because when you have a system that's hard-coded and you run it, your ability to see exactly how the system responds to price, both in back tests and live tests, is very difficult because you don't know when the system is triggering and when it's supposed to trigger. So when you have uh, Bloodhound, you've got, okay, cool, I've got an entry signal. I know exactly where this is going to trigger within the system. And when you compile it with a logic matrix, it's going to take various components. And then you can visually see exactly what is happening. And if you didn't have that in a hard-coded, you don't know if there are errors in your system. And if there are, it's very hard to pinpoint what exactly is going on. So this allows you to not only quickly make a system, but it allows you to visually make sure that it's working as intended. So here we're just going to do the entry logic webinar. So here we have the entry trade signal. This is going to be the preliminary signal for our system. And what we're going to do, because sometimes the trade signals are not exactly what we want, they might happen a little bit too frequently. Um, in volatile markets, so there could be some false signals. We want to look to try and eliminate some of them. And we're going to do that by taking the EMA slope, which is this, this slow moving average, and we're going to filter these signals to make sure that the, the EMA is in a decline for short signals and an incline for long signals. So that is simply done by doing an AND. So we want the trade trigger signal to be apparent. And we want the slope 
to work in conjunction. And some of the other things that you can do is do a simple time session solver. So this is if you want to want your system to work only for X hours a day, you can use some of the preset uh, session solvers, or you can actually just do this in in Blackbird as well, which I'll show you here in just a few minutes. But that is simply by doing and again. And that is basically it. So now we are going to load up Blackbird. And here we want this to be enabled. Exit on close is false. This is simply for if you're looking to have the system exit during uh, whatever session you have, and we're going to want that false and click apply. So now that we have the Blackbird uh, tool set in here, we can go ahead and take our Bloodhound signal Oops, what template file. So we're going to go ahead and select our webinar example template. And we've got our logic saved as well. We've got our entry logic web webinar logic. And just click OK. So now we have all of the different um, logic, logic that we have. And for this example, we're just going to stick with the simple entry logic that we just created. It's the simple uh, trade trigger signal in conjunction with the, the EMA slope. So we want this to show on the chart. Threshold is, you know, whatever you have for your system, this is going to be a value between uh, 1 and, and uh, negative 1. So this is fine by default. And we're just going to simply put a, a market entry. Uh, there's no sense to get too complicated with, with something like this. And uh, profit targets. Uh, this is, you know, something so simple. We're just going to do uh, a 10 tick, take profit, uh, stop loss. Doesn't necessarily need to be set because what the system is going to do is if it has an inverse uh, signal, which is going to be, if it's short, it's going to close and reverse for the long. Uh, stop loss isn't really necessary. We're going to click OK on that. And we are going to enable it, actually, just to get it to show up on the chart. We're going to reset it. So now that we, we can actually see where these signals are going to be generated. And just to make sure that we have the indicator correct, I'm going to use it to what the system was designed around so you can see exactly where these signals are going to be generated. And now we're just going to do a quick replay. Oops. Enable it. Uh, this replay is provided by Market Replay. This is a, a great tool for you to, um, again, test your stuff in essentially real time using historical data. I think I might have missed something here. So let's just take out. Um, an example. There we go. Entry, entry logic web. There we go. So now, we'll speed this up quick and, and try and get a few, few signals. So this signal, because it didn't meet up with the, the. EMA, because it was on a decline, 
this long signal was emitted. So now we have a short signal. This is generated because the EMA slope was in a decline and it also had a short signal generated. So now we have the profit target set here for 10 ticks and we are going to hope that it makes it. Um, if you are doing this in real time and you see a the market trend in a direction and you have a, a set profit target or even a stop loss, you can go ahead and move this to whatever you would like. But default is going to stick with 10 ticks and we can just continue with, with that. Again, we're going to speed this up because I don't think anybody wants to wait to, uh, to get some more signals. it up a little bit more. And it hit the profit target. And um, you know, obviously after that it, it continued to to fall more. So I think uh, I did this this replay the scenario last night, so I do believe there are a few more coming up, so bear with me with that. Um, I can take this time to Go over a couple questions. Let me pop this out, see if there's any. Uh, Jan asked, uh, can you use the Ninja Trader optimizer to change the parameters of Ruby? Uh, yes, like uh, any any um, indicator you have the parameter values that you can set um, to have ranges for so if you're looking to optimize a strategy um, you can you can go ahead and do it as such So as you can see, when the chart generates, um, how the system actually works in uh, generating how the pivot points update, how it generates the Fibonacci extensions, and it also has uh, implementation of some pattern recognition software. So you can take these these range pivots, and based on their formation and the ranges of them, they sometimes will generate a uh, recognition of a pattern. Again, it looks like we had another uh, cell signal, so we're going to let this play out. And it hit a profit target, and it's just going to continue on. So obviously, a system like this is um, it's it's very rudimentary. I wouldn't expect you to go ahead and, and take this webinar template and throw it on a live account and cross your fingers um, to have something like this. It can work. Um, I, I ran this this replay. This is for the entire month of uh, October, and using this this simple system it, it generated uh, just shy of a thousand dollars not including commissions uh, for the month so you know it, it just gives you uh, something to play with a good starting point you can then take the results of what you experienced in your your back test and your replays and go back to the drawing board to further tweak it and optimize it obviously not curve fit it but to look at ways and how to improve the system based on the foundational logic you have of the system itself. So next we're just going to go back to 
Again, that was a live demonstration of using market replay data through uh, market replay. Uh, again, great tool for, for you and if you're, if you're doing uh, any automated system and you want to test something beyond a traditional backtesting system. Uh, here, some of the uh, additional products and services of Lucrum. We have the discretionary trading system, such as Ruby, which obviously can then be implemented into something uh, like an automated system using Bloodhound and Blackbird. Uh, have some trading indicators and bar types. Uh, let's just quickly go over one of the bar types that I have. Uh, this is included with Ruby upon purchase. This is the Vision Renko bar type. Uh, this is a what are the most accurate Renko bar types there are? There is for NinjaTrader 7 or 8. Uh, why this is so unique is it has a offset within the formation of each bar. So a traditional Renko bar has the impression of seamless price data, meaning that price goes from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, when in actuality, there are many occurrences of price having some jumps, some skips, and when you have an automated system, there are many occurrences where the price that the automated system filled at would not be something that's actually feasible in a real-time situation. So with this, with having the offset, it has the, when the signal generates for any automated system, it looks for that bar to close and then offset for the next price point to accurately fill it. So if I were to pull up a, let me just crank this at the end of this, this contract. This might take a little bit. I'm going to fast forward this replay all the way to the end. I didn't quite pull it up. But you can see that when the price isn't seamless, the the blocks of the Renko bar will be a little bit more sporadic, which is an accurate definition of how those should work. So it's included with Ruby. Uh, again, it's, it's just a, a very accurate Renko bar type if you are inclined to use any Renko type system. So along with that, um, I do automated trading system consulting that is simply if you have an idea for an automated system and you have some difficulties in getting it exactly to what you're looking to have it do, you know, I can set up a time to go over what your objectives are with this with the system and see how to achieve those goals as well as improve the system and system theory. Uh, do some system training and general, general trading education. Um, if you're looking to get a little bit more detailed uh, experience with Ruby and you're not sure, sure where to start, uh, I can set up a, a time to uh, go over Ruby in more detail and get some examples that suit more of your specific trading objectives and style, as well as some system theory and application. So this is just broad overview of system theory, how to implement it and how to execute it, and how to have a working and successful automated system. So the trading system consulting, uh, you know, I provide the knowledge and experience when developing a trading system. Again, I've been doing automated trading for many years now, and there's a lot more to learn, but I would safe to consider myself uh, an expert in the field. And then when we look at uh, any trading system, automated or otherwise, we look at the aspects of repeatability and consistency in it. So when you have a system, you, a lot of people are prone to curve fit it. So they look at a system, they create a system, they back test it, and they're like, okay, these results are pretty good. They'll go back to the drawing board, they'll look at the parameters, and they'll start tweaking, tweaking them to optimize the profitability of a system on that, that data. Uh, ultimately, when you do that, any blind data in the future, it's not going to work nearly as effective as to have something that is optimized in a proper manner, which uses both blind data 
as well as accessible data for the system. So that goes back into measuring the robustness and curve fit inefficiencies of a system. We look at how curve fit a system is and we test it in various metrics. And then look at the accuracy of live performance against back tests. It's very common to have a system that works great in back tests, but in live performance, there's a discrepancy in it. And the discrepancy could be of many of different factors. Um, so this is just to, to make sure that it's working as intended. For trade trading and education, uh, do personalized trading, trading training based on your own objectives and skill levels and to improve your trade opportunity, identifying, uh, learn proper ways to set stop losses and take profits, and general trade theory and application. So that's simply people that are looking, that are new to trading, want to uh, hone their experience, is um, doing a, a quick training session is, is always an option. So with Ruby, you get it for both NinjaTrader 7 and 8. Uh, there is a NinjaTrader 8 release. So you have it for both platforms. If you're still using 7 and you think you might transition to 8 in the future, Ruby will be ready and you'll have it available to you. The Vision Wrinkle Bar Type is also included with the system. Uh, that is the bar type that I gave you a quick overview of. Uh, the Comprehensive Use and Trading Manual. This is a, a documentation that outlines every parameter within the system itself uh, and how those parameter values adjust the, the system. And um, it also includes a, a few different examples on how to trade Ruby. And as always, it's free updates. Uh, whenever there's a new update that rolls out, you'll be notified and provided that and free support. So if you're having any technical issues, uh, even some general questions on how to do a specific thing within the system, you know, I'm always available uh, via phone or email. And for the attendees of this webinar, you will receive a uh, one hour of basic Ruby setup and consulting. So this will fast track your way to getting Ruby into a working state. You know, obviously out of the box, it works fantastic. The parameters will give you something to start with, but this gives you a little bit more of an edge in honing down the system into your specific trading style. So for the special offer bundles for both Ruby and Bloodhound, as well as Blackbird. You get considerable savings um, on those. So this is available through lucumtradingsystems.com forward slash bloodhoundwebinar.php. Um, and I can provide that, that link in the chat here in a minute. So here you can see a couple hundred savings on Bloodhound and Ruby. And for Ruby and Blackbird, it's savings of close to, or a little over $300. Uh, next, without further ado, we're going to go <clears throat> jump into the winner of the Ruby system. So let me go ahead and just pull up a random number generator. Looks like we've got... 76 people here, and 36, so let me just go ahead and yeah. All right, one sec while I count these out. <laughs> So we got John Powell. John Powell, if you are here, please send me an email and I will be happy to uh, go ahead and 
send you your free Ruby. So congratulations on that. Um, last, uh, let's go over some, some questions. So Alejandro asked, uh, the example solvers that you showed us in the webinar are included in the offer? Yeah, absolutely. I will provide you with the template for the outputs as well as the solvers and the logic examples. Uh, license for one computer or one uh, laptop. Or uh, if you have a laptop and a desktop computer uh, and you purchase Ruby, go ahead and send me an email uh, requesting an additional license for your uh, other machine. I'd be happy to provide one for you. John asked, do I include any other Bloodhound or Blackbird templates? Uh, as for right now, the only Bloodhound template that is provided uh, is just the basic output solver, which, which uh, I went over. Oops. All right, and then here is my contact information. It's a fill at lucumtradingsystems.com and phone number 602-888-3006. And let me pull up the special offer for the bundles. I'll put that in, in the chat there. So you can go ahead and, and click that link and see all the different offers. Um, again, it's pretty considerable savings. Uh, you know, granted, the Ruby and, and Blackbird package, basically for an extra hundred bucks, you get Ruby, as well as the Vision Wrinkle Bar type. So, pretty awesome deals there. Um, other than that, uh, let's just wait a little bit to see uh, a couple more questions. There's a dotted line shown on the examples. Uh, I believe that is referred to as the the ATR, the average true range. Yep, that'll be these uh, triangle dots. Um, there's also the the pivot point extensions, which you might be referring to as well, which are these very faint, might be a little bit difficult to see in this webinar, but they extend and they project past the, the uh, apexes of the pivot points. So that lets you uh, look at so, to where some support and resistance levels might have been uh, in some of the previous data. Is there a way to do a slope of the EMA slope in order to get the second derivative to use in a comparison of momentum of different commodities? Um, let me think about that for a minute. I believe there are ways to use some of the I believe there are some function nodes that allow you to manipulate how the slope of the EMA would work and to use it. Um, that is something I, I would definitely reach out to Shark Indicators for and to get a definitive answer on something like that. But I would, uh, I would anticipate that it would. Uh, you showed several solvers, are they included? You only had Blackbird signal off the EMA slope. I am asking if all the solvers are included. Uh, yeah, John, they, they will be in included. Uh, hey, take your time with the questions, Phil. I see you got quite a few coming in, so no rush at all, man. Okay, perfect. And John, my email, I'll put that here in, in chat. Look, that is Phil at com. Uh, 
Leonardo asked, um, do we have to build and or build the system of Ruby, or is it a trading system already built in? Um, in itself, it is not any type of automated system. Um, simply using um, Blackbird and Bloodhound, you can take the accessible outputs of Ruby to then create your own logic matrix and create a system behind. Uh, Charles asked, uh, he already has Bloodhound Ultimate, what would the cost for Blackbird and Ruby be? Uh, that would be uh, $15.90 for Ruby and Blackbird. Uh, Peter asked, sorry, this is a little bit delay. I missed it. Running on other markets like NQ or GC. Uh, yeah, this was this was simply just an example using using crude. But if you wanted to use the system or create one uh, around any other other futures market or or forex even, uh, you could certainly do so. Do you include the solvers for Bloodhound and Blackbird if you purchase just the Ruby software? I already have Bloodhound and Blackbird. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Bob. Uh, I can I can provide you both the the solvers and the the logic upon purchase. So I'll go ahead and, and just see if there's any any other uh, uh, questions that trickle in, but. I think for the most part, that is about it. All right, well, thank you all very much for attending. Uh, great to have you all here. I hope you guys have a fantastic uh, holiday season coming up. And until next time, uh, take care, guys. Thank you. All right, thank you uh, again for for taking the time to present, Phil. Um, awesome presentation as usual. Everyone was very interested. So you got a lot of questions there. Uh, for anyone who tuned in late, uh, this is being recorded. We will send a copy of the replay to your email by tomorrow morning at the latest. So just keep an eye out for that. And everyone, uh, have a great weekend. Happy holidays. Thanks again, Phil. Thank you.